Hey, it's Cherie Matheson from Big Notes Get Votes. Now, I'm here today to give you three singing habits that you can focus on in the next three days. Now, why I'm doing it like this is I'm a professional singer and a vocal coach, and I'm currently on tour. Here in New Zealand, we are able to get out. It's summer. We are doing all of the music things, which we are so grateful for. And what that means is that when you get a little bit busier, sometimes all of the things that you have to manage as a singer and a performer can feel like a, a big to-do list, even though they're super essential elements that we need to keep up with every day. So as we're hitting the new year, I just wanted to reboot, review, refocus all of the rewords to help us just take a snapshot of three singing habits we can focus on in the next three days to boost our confidence in our singing and our performance. And so today's three topics are a little bit review focused. It's kind of a check-in. It's firstly vocal health, specifically checking in with any medications that you might be taking. Number two is postural check, postural alignment, making sure that when things are full on that you're remembering to align your posture and to be sure that you're not making it a little harder for yourself to sing by having a compromised postural alignment. And the third thing is a vocal range check-in. Now, you might have done a vocal range in the very beginning when you started, or some people haven't ever done one. And so I'm going to share with you today how to do that, and also why it's so important that you should do that. So let's get started. Number one, talking about vocal health, for me, it is the number one focus, the primary element that you need to take care of. And I can share some links with you on vocal health tips for singers specifically. So assuming that you have your vocal health in check, then I want you to review some of the things that you are adding in, like medications. I suffer from really bad hay fever, so I have to take a nasal spray and an antihistamine. The issue is it's very drying by design. I have to be sure that I'm keeping on top of my hydration. I use an app to track it, but I'm pretty mindful. For me, hydration is one of those fundamentals that I very rarely let slip. And there's always a workaround if you do let it slip, but I'll come at you with another tip on how you can essentially troubleshoot a little later down the track. So with the meds, things like asthma inhalers as well too can be unbelievably drying and it's a simple fix, as simple as using a spacer when you use your inhaler so that the fine particles of the medicine aren't going directly onto your vocal folds. So those are two of the most common ones that I've come across with my clients is asthma inhalers. Sometimes the extreme is it actually causes dysphonia because it impacts the vocal folds so much. You, you actually lose your voice. And one of my clients lost their voice for two weeks. It was pretty challenging. So check in with your meds. You can just do a simple Google search. Look for your medication by a couple of different names. You can sometimes find the insert that comes with the meds online. Have a read through the side effects, paying particular attention to anything that dries you out uh, that might have a voice loss or dysphonia impact on your vocal folds, anything that's relative to your mouth and your throat. If you find that you are personally affected by it, have a chat with your medical professional. Explain to them that your voice is very important to you. You might be developing your singing voice or you might be a high voice user already and that you want to look at alternatives or could they suggest some use case scenarios where you might be using a spacer, for example, taking your inhaler. They might have some tricks and tips that they can help you to lower any impact on your voice. At the end of the day, you have to listen to your medical professional. If you need this medication to live and improve your quality of life, that's the most important thing. Then secondary, you can look at options to balance out by increasing hydration, by using a spacer, or any of the other tricks and tips that your medical professional can help you with. On the other hand, we want to look at some of the non-prescription medications that you might be using, things like lozenges. Some lozenges have a numbing effect on your voice. They're antiseptic and they numb, which is great because it helps lower the pain, but pain is your body telling you that something's not right. And so you definitely don't want to be using these lozenges and then singing through the pain. So be very mindful. If you have have lost your voice and you're using something like a, a medication to help you get your voice back, be mindful of the fact that 
You don't want to make the problem a long-term problem. And ideally, you just don't want to sing. That's the ultimate thing. If it hurts, don't do it. That is my only rule for singing. So I want you to have a look at the meds that you're taking. This can include natural medications as well. Be sure that everything is serving your voice from the context or the focus of your voice, but then take a step back and look at the entire body and think about what you need and what works best for you with just a spotlight in the back of your mind on how these medications or these additions might be impacting your voice. Now next up is your posture and this again is taking a holistic approach to your voice. We want to make sure that the case that the instrument is housed in is also in good condition. It's more so important for vocalists. So one of the things that we talk about of course is nutrition and hydration and sleep and movement and releasing tension and this is an extension of that. So your skeletal framework holds your body up. It is the framework for your body. And when you're in practice, now this is specific to practice, when you're troubleshooting and checking in, you want to be sure that something like your postural alignment isn't holding you back or making it harder for you to sing. So it's just in the practice room that I really want you to focus on this because I work predominantly with contemporary singers and there are people like Pink, for example, who can literally swing from the rafters while she's singing. So I want you to make sure that when you're practicing, you have this postural alignment to be sure that there's not any postural positions or muscular tension that is making it harder for you to, to sing. So we start off with our head and one of the things that I look out for is to be sure that we're not leaning or jutting our chin forward like that and so I'm showing you the extremes the other positioning is where the jaw will drop back and so you want to find the extremes of any postural position and make sure that you know where the middle is and what feels comfortable for you. You can also then check and kind of feel like you're being pulled up, a string coming through the top of your head, and that's gonna elongate your spine. Then I want you to think about your chest. Are you using a slightly elevated and open chest position? I call it the superhero pose. And then also checking that your pelvis is aligned as well. And so you can take your pelvis and tilt it all the way forward and all the way back and then find that middle position. For me, it feels a little awkward. It feels kind of like my butt's tucked under a little bit. And then I check in with my chest. How I do that is I take a breath in, I exhale, my hands go in line with my shoulders and I just squeeze my shoulder blades together and then drop my hands back down. And I, I'm left with a slightly elevated chest position. That in line with my neutral pelvis, checking in with my head position and my jaw position and just making sure that my spine is elongated and I feel like I've got a, a string pulling through the top helps me to ensure that my postural alignment is in check. And that is good because I often notice, oh, there's a little bit of tension on my right side, which there often is because I'm right-handed and I use my mouse with my right hand. So I do suffer a lot of tension from my right side and that postural alignment reminding my body of where it's meant to be is a great reminder of, oof, I need to be careful of that. And so when I'm singing as well too, I do find that it, that tension that stems from my shoulder and my wrist and my arm does end up really weighing on my right side and there's a little bit of tension. So I often do like chin stretches and some laryngeal massage. Those are my postural chicken reminders that help me to choose the right actions. But singer stretches are the way to go all day, every day, because they look at your entire body and then you just tack on your posture check-in to be sure that you're really aligned and that you understand that the areas of tension can be relaxed through stretching, massage, and really focused attention. You can always see a physio or a medical profession if you're having any ongoing muscular tension, but do check in with your posture and let me know how it impacts your singing. Having that clear alignment for your breath to work in the way that it needs to work to power your voice will make a massive difference. Last but not least, vocal range assessment. So again, we're just assessing where we're at. And the reason that you'd wanna do a vocal range assessment is to find out the total scope of notes that you can sing. Now, there is no right or wrong. There is no perfect range. If this is about you finding out your vocal range. And so you 
start at middle C and you basically sing up to your top note, come back down, sing to your lowest note. And when I'm working with clients, I get them to do it on every single vowel sound. It's very telling. You can learn uh, a lot about what vowels you favor and what you find a wee bit harder. For me, ah is a little bit of a trickier vowel. And e I find very easy, as well as oo, for that matter. So I'm going to link you to a video where I take you through that entire process of how to find your vocal range, note by note, vowel by vowel, and I coach you through it. So I want you to do a vocal range assessment and then pop it down below in the comments to let me know where your vocal range is at. It's a little accountability. And then this is something I want you to do every three to six months. When you're working your voice and you're practicing regularly, you will inevitably extend your range. Also, you'll learn techniques that help you to understand your, the voice qualities that you can use, understand your instrument, and in turn, it allows you to access different elements of your voice that can help to expand your range. So do that vocal range assessment as a baseline, and then be sure to check in every three to six months and come back and have a look or write it down somewhere so that you can check back and see what your vocal range is. You may not see massive growth. I'm looking for a semitone at either end. I'm also looking for transitions between uh, my coordination change points. So when the voice registration or the voice qualities, when they change from one point to the next, I'm looking to navigate those with intention uh, through different phrases, different vowels, different syllables, words with more ease. And so sometimes it's not necessarily about extending your range, but knowing what you're working with, knowing where these change points are and having more control over how you navigate, whether you want it to be smoother or like a yodel, whether you want to have control and be able to flip between one voice quality and the next for impact. So having that vocal range as a whole and then knowing where your coordination change points are is very helpful. Last but not least, you find out where your sweet spot is, which is usually about 8 to 12 notes right in the middle of that. That is the range that you will find it most easy to coordinate. You might find that is the range that you're most comfortable with and have the most control with already, or it's a range that you might want to write songs in or change the key of your covers or reworks or even your originals into to make it easier for you to sing. Now making it easier by changing in, into a particular key is not a cop out, it's spotlighting the strengths in your voice. If you want to challenge yourself and work outside of your range there's nothing wrong with that at all but really knowing where the gold is in your voice and focusing on what's good versus always what needs to be improved, I think is a mindset approach that we as singers also need to consider. So do that vocal range assessment, comment below, try the postural check-ins and definitely check in with those medications. Let me know if you have any questions at all and I'll see you again soon for three more singing habits that you can focus on in the next three days. If you want to know when they're coming out, hit the subscribe and the notifications button and you'll be the first to know.